TorahCafe.com. Please welcome community leader, entrepreneur, and catalyst behind the creation of jscreen.org, Mr. Randy Gold. Can one person change the world? Rav Joseph Soloveitchik, who I learned from a new friend today, had a great relationship with the Rebbe. Rav Soloveitchik writes in his book, Halachic Man, that the most fundamental principle of all is that man must create himself. This emphasis on choice and freedom and responsibility is a distinct Jewish idea. My favorite Parsha in the Torah is Parsha Vayeshev. What happens in Parsha Vayeshev? It's the story of Yosef. And we all know the story of Yosef. The coat of many colors. He gets thrown into the pit. He's sold into slavery. He ends up in prison and then a viceroy in Egypt. Talk about a guy who recreated himself. There's one line in the Yosef story that has always fascinated me. Yaakov says to Yosef, go out and check on your brothers. Yosef goes out into the field. He gets a little lost. And he happens upon a stranger. And the stranger says to him, can I help you? And Yosef says, yeah, I'm looking for a group of guys, my brothers. Have you seen them? And the stranger says, yeah, 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 I think so. They went that way. Now, the Torah tells us nothing about this stranger. In fact, the Torah describes this stranger as Haish, the man. And some commentators will say that Maybe it was a malach, it was an angel, maybe the angel Gabriel. But the Torah doesn't tell us anything about this guy. And this guy is responsible for the entirety of Jewish history. If he doesn't say, they went that way, Yosef doesn't find his brothers. There's no slavery in Egypt. There's no Exodus. There's no Torah at Sinai. There's no you. There's no me. None of it. All because of this stranger. So tell me, can one person change the world? My wife Caroline and I knew that we should be screened for Jewish genetic diseases before we got married. So I went to my Jewish doctor, and he screened me for two diseases. Caroline went to her Jewish doctor, and he screened her for eight diseases. And we weren't a match for any mutations for disease, so we had nothing to worry about. Our son, Natanel, was born in 2006. And in 2008, our daughter Eden was born. It wasn't long after Eden was born that we knew something was terribly wrong. She wasn't rolling over. She wasn't sitting up. She wasn't meeting all the milestones. She wasn't doing the things that other little babies were doing. Her eyes were crossed, so we thought, it's a vision problem. We did two surgeries to try and correct her vision, but it didn't help. At nine months, we started physical therapy. At 12 months, no improvement. So at 15 months, we went to see a neurologist. 
and he ordered an MRI of Eden's brain. The night of the MRI, he called us at 9.30 at home. And he said, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, is really bad. And you guys need to be prepared for the worst. That night, there was nothing that we could do. So we stood over Eden's crib and we cried. We took Eden back to the neurologist. He drew more blood and he ran more tests and everything came back normal. He then referred us to a geneticist who drew more blood and ran more tests and everything came back normal. And then one day the geneticist called us and he said, you know, there's one other thing that I'd like to test Eden for. And it's a Jewish genetic disease. And we said, oh, doctor, you don't have to worry about that because we've already been screened for Jewish genetic diseases. And he said, let me tell you a little bit about it. And before we got off the phone, we knew that that was it. He had described Eden perfectly. So we went back to the geneticist. He drew more blood and he ran that one more test. And for two of the most grueling and painful weeks, we prayed that this wasn't it. But on August 25th, 2009, at two in the afternoon, the phone rang and the voice on the other side of the phone said, I'm sorry, but your daughter has mucolipidosis type 4. Now, kids with ML4 never learn to talk. They never learn to walk. They have a maximum mental capacity of about 18 months. They go blind by the time they're 12 years old. And they only live until early adulthood. My little Eden, daddy's little girl, she's not gonna go to school like other kids. She's not gonna walk down the aisle or have kids of her own. And she's gonna live with us for the rest of her life. How could this be? We, we asked to be screened. Well, the truth is, neither one of our doctors even knew what to screen us for. And neither one of our rabbis ever mentioned Jewish genetic diseases in our premarital counseling. So Caroline and I have recreated ourselves in ways that we never imagined. In addition to giving Eden the best possible care that we can, and she gets eight to 10 hours of therapy every day, we also felt a sense of responsibility to the Jewish people to make sure that the tragic story that our family has doesn't affect another unsuspecting couple. So as a result of Eden's diagnosis, Caroline and I created the not-for-profit organization called J-Screen. JScreen is the largest, most comprehensive, accessible, and affordable Jewish genetic disease screening program in the country. We've screened thousands and thousands of people in every single state in the country. 
we've identified hundreds of couples who carry the same mutation for a disease. One third of us in the room tonight is a carrier for at least one of the over 100 diseases that J-Screen screens for. One third. God forbid this entire section. And if both husband and wife carry the same mutation, there's a 25% chance with every pregnancy that they could have a child with that disease. J-Screen is the only organization in the world that screens for Ashkenazi, Sephardic, Persian, and common Caucasian diseases all on one saliva test. How does it work? It's very easy. You log on to jscreen.org. You put in your information, and we send you a little box this big, a spit kit in the mail. You spit in the cup, you put it back in the pre-addressed envelope, and in three or four weeks, our genetics counselors call you with your results. It is just that easy. Spit and mail. And if you have any health insurance at all, your max out-of-pocket cost is $149. $149 for the health of your family. I'm just a simple accountant from Atlanta, Georgia. But my family is changing the world. And you can too. Changing the world means not being afraid to act. Not being afraid to speak up. Remember, it was the stranger who said to Yosef, can I help you? Without that Yosef, the stranger can't change the world. Be that stranger, or maybe even that malach, for someone that you know, for your grandkids, for your kids, for your cousins, for your friend that just got engaged. Tell them. Send them to jscreen.org. Pick up a flyer at our table that's in the hallway. There's a coupon code on the flyer. On the website, you can save a few bucks. It's just that easy at jscreen.org. My Little Eden is saving lives every single day. And if that's what she is here to do, there is no more noble a life than that. So tell me, can one person change the world? Yeah, you bet. Thank you.